Welcome to Center of Light Radio. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. It's going to be my birthday Saturday, so I think what I'm going to do is actually do presentations for Thanksgiving evening as well as for my birthday on on Saturday. You don't have to buy me anything for my birthday, but if you must, keep it under $100. <laughs> Welcome to Center of Light Radio. Keith Anthony Blanchard here. Yanava, ya heart, God will. Na, the mind, when it's used in balance and there's clarity afoot. Getting out of the monkey, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, hoo, 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 all that noise. And va, the backbone, to carry out the will of our father, mother, the source the will of ourselves when we are aligned and we're able to use such a title. Welcome to Center of Light Radio, Center of Divine Enfoldment and Reinforcement Radio to ignite the soul and the transformation station. Tonight, my guest is Mr. Derek Grosskirth, and we're going to be speaking about his wonderful podcast. It looks fantastic. Um, the Truth Seeker Podcast. And we're going to be talking about his new book, Spirit realm listen to this i'm going to show you this book cover this is amazing one of the best book covers i've ever seen check out this book cover it's fantastic it's absolutely fantastic the graphics are amazing there's color balance there's mystery there's darkness there's light there's force there's ease it's just all really really cool so i want to make a couple of adverts lots of things are changing Lots of things are changing as you look out and about in your world. What do you see? Einstein asked a very simple question. It can be the most important question of your life. Let me look at a couple things. Things look a little strange. Uh, yeah, it's Facebook goofing up. So I'm going to stay here on the YouTube section to see how they're acting really quickly. Everything's moving along. New software, always <laughs> new software, things are happening. So, um, you know, are you lining up with what's truly happening in, in the spirit, getting out of the noise of the world? It's a test. No one's testing you but yourself. Your soul is seeking your attention. I've always mentioned how integral this is for your growth to begin to look within yourself to such a way that you lose all identity of what you know as you. And you become one with the Christ. You become one with the Buddha. You become one with all that is good. Whatever you choose to deem it, when you become one with that, well, you may ask the question, well, how do I know I'm one with that? You are already one with that, so you can stop that fight already. But how will you know when you are truly conscious of being in the one game? Well, joy is always evidence of the presence of God. You will find bliss moving throughout your body when there was none before. Everything miraculously, magically happens spontaneously. You will know you are in the flow consciously. You are always in the flow. You're never not in the flow. When we're unconscious, we're like those rocks that create rapids, only bring about trouble. But when you're conscious of being in the river, the conscious moving life stream, it gives life to everything in the universe. When you're conscious of that, you know how to navigate. You know how to negotiate. You know how to champion your mountain. All that brings said, bring, all that bring said, <laughs> I think I'm going to get down to some center of light radio beeswax. Tonight, my guest is Derek Grosskirth, and we're speaking about Truth Seeker Podcast. Let me find my notes on my guest for tonight. We're going to be speaking about the Truth Seeker Podcast, as well as his book, The Spirit or Spirit Realm, Angels, Demons, Spirits, and the Sovereignty of God. I love it. Truth seeker Derek Grosskirth is a Christian mystic. I didn't know they could coexist, but I love it already. He is a Christian myst mystic, Amazon best-selling author, visionary artist, and seer with a vision to release the spirit of awakening. Also, a songwriter, Truth Seeker, has released over 200 songs, each one relating to the subject of spirituality and Christ. 
His journey has brought him through research and experience with the occult, paranormal, Christianity, and the spirit realm. This has led him into many mystical encounters with God, angels, spirits, and many other supernatural beings. As the host of the Truth Seeker podcast, I'm going to drop that link here shortly, he has interviewed hundreds of experts and leaders in the fields of supernatural, religious, phil philosophical, and paranormal studies. Truth Seeker has made it his life's work to understand the spiritual realms and relate it back to people in a practical way. His desire to help people embrace the reality of the spiritual world so they can walk in the supernatural freedom in their lives. One moment, I am now dropping a couple of links so everyone on Derek's side of the fence gets to know who I am and everyone on my tribe gets to know my brand new eternal infinite <laughs> brother welcome to center of light radio derek my friend how are you bro hey brother i'm doing well how are you i'm good sir let's get right down to the, to the thick of it what brings you on this path as a seeker of truth you know uh, for most people derek i'm sure you know this as well it's pain pain is an amazing catalyst towards god was this your case or did you grow up in a spiritual household as to why this stuck with you and you just decided to move further into this passion yeah pain confusion uh the seeking process the supernatural all of it kind of ties in um especially getting into some of this stuff as a misguided teen into some of the uh dark arcs and esoteric things kind of uh without doing the proper spiritual work, um, really set me up for some encounters that uh, were scary, were dangerous, you know, could have killed me. And um, I'm lucky to be alive today and have my mind and sanity and peace. And um, yeah, so that all of those experiences um, lit a fire within me. And um, just to keep seeking and searching uh, God, Christ, and uh, through the, the spirit supernatural and uh and, and in doing that have had beautiful and scary encounters with beings on the other side that interact with humanity what did it take for you to find your voice being in radio did you always have a calling just a burning inside of you, you know i want to broadcast i want to speak or does this happen yeah. how did this come about for you bro yeah, no, it's always uh, been within me to be a, like an entertainer, to make people laugh, to uh, to share and things like that, even maybe be a storyteller, um, but just to be open and honest about my experiences and stuff. Even so, just as a kid, I've always been like the jester, right? The class clown, always putting the eyes on me and things like that, right? So that's kind of was a given, like I was going to do something. I didn't know that it would kind of morph into what it is today and then got born again in the Christian church and I knew I would be doing ministry, but I didn't know like what it would look like, you know, if it was like standing on stages at churches preaching or whatever the case is. And so it's kind of morphed over the years into what it is now, this, this whole podcast and movement and community of people who are like, like-minded and uh, have similar interests and are open to ask the bigger questions in life and um, a free safe space to do that born again so derek has this experience of being born again when you were in that space my friend be it a church be it at a friend's house be it in the bar you're having a beer whenever the magic of the love of god just poured itself all over you would that be an accurate way to describe it you you did you just say i accept and i'm born again and i'm not gonna make any more mistakes or did you have serious I'm, i know the answer to that i'm just Creating question, uh, but dialogue. But what was that like for you, if I may? Yeah, it was um, just to make a, a long story short. Really, I was kind of coming up into a lot of mystical stuff and really dark arts and Wicca and a lot of uh, uh, different paths and stuff. But I was just interested in the other side. And um, my mom was dating a guy who his son was a minister, and he would always ask me to come to church. And I didn't really want to go. It wasn't my cup of tea. But then he would ask me to come to prayer meetings with him. And I was like, well, I don't want to go to a prayer meeting either. I'm not really into yeah, that. Go was, meet um, with a bunch of you guys praying. Like, I don't know why, why that would seem interest to, uh, of interest to me. But then he invited me this one night. 
I told him I didn't want to go, but he said that there was going to be a prophet there. And I said, okay, what's a prophet? He said, well, a prophet is like a, a Christian psychic. And that kind of caught my interest because I was into, you know, just anything mystical or otherworldly. So I went to the prayer meeting and um, we're at this, somebody's apartment and all of these people are, they have like worship music on this beautiful hymns and songs that they were singing to God. And people had their eyes closed and they would just had their hands lifted and they were like in this a static state. They were somewhere else. Like they were like, they weren't there. There were, some of them were crying. They were singing these beautiful songs and it was just a sweet spirit of peace that was in the entire room. And, um, so I, I knew that they had something going on, you know, so it, it, it definitely piqued my interest. And, um, one of the, uh, the guys who was there came and sat down beside me and said, Hey Derek, uh, would you like to ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins? And it was just that simple. And, you know, I'm just thinking to myself, like, I don't want him to hold my sins against me. So, yeah, yeah, I'd love for him to forgive me, right? <laughs> so uh, he asked if he can pray with me. I said, yeah. And so he kind of leads me in what's known as the sinner's prayer, just asking Jesus to come into my heart, acknowledging the work that he did on the cross for the, my sins. And I uh, asking him to come, to come in my life and cleanse me of all the wrong that I've done and and that kind of thing. And I prayed that prayer. And immediately I felt this like fire come down from heaven upon me and just like went through my body and just cleansed out all the wrong that I had ever done. It was just beautiful euphoria, just moving through my, my inner being, cleaning out like every time that I ever lied or stole or cheated or any, anything wrong that I had done. And I felt it cleaning me out and I was just crying and weeping and my body was just shaking with this fervent heat. And that was in 1998 at a prayer meeting that I gave my life to Christ and, uh, had that beautiful encounter and um, it just changed my life forever. I love that you used the imagery um, of fire. You know, I, <laughs> it's a divine fire. It's that which burns everything, all the nonsense, all the folly, all the goofy stuff that we do. And I'm okay with doing goofy stuff. I've learned to forgive <laughs> myself because the lamb has been sacrificed over 2,000 years ago for our liberation today. So there's nothing that I can do. Nothing exceeds the power of God's forgiveness. Yeah. Wow. How delicious is that? We're already free. There's nothing. There's nothing else. There's no enlightenment that you're going to achieve you know, with a pat on the back and a black belt certificate award. Yes, you may feel these different layers and levels of accomplishment and you will know this accomplishment by your awareness expansion how groovy you feel inside would you say so, say so Derek yeah I mean there's just a levels of awareness and consciousness and like like you said we're never more forgiven we're never more closer to God than we are right now but there's levels and we grow in conscious awareness of that and sometimes we may feel like we're closer or whatever or we know more um, I think with uh, with with age comes wisdom and we learn from our mistakes and we learn the journey. We learn trials and tribulations and things like that. And we, we have, you know, what our own inner progress and our own spiritual journey, I've, I've, there's levels. We're not the same person, people that we used to be, you know, and we learn so much. But as far as like we're never more forgiven, we're never more righteous, we're never more loved than we are at this present moment. And so that moment follows us everywhere that we are to be present in that, in the love of God, in the light of God, with Christ, with the angels, with the demons, with the fairies, like with everything that exists in this realm and in the realms to come that, that coexist with us. And just the beauty and awe of the majesty of God in that creates the sovereignty of God in the ecosystem. And that's kind of what the book talks about, a little bit of all of that kind of stuff, just kind of coexisting with those entities as we do this song and dance throughout eternity. You sound like you actually lumped together angels and demons as if it's cool. Because mm -hmm. most people would say demons, uh-uh, uh-uh. And I, yeah. I, get, I get the whole ideology yeah. about it. I understand all the truths about it, like you. But for the sake of asking yeah. the question, yeah. why Scary. did you put angels and demons in the same category as if it's all just a simple play and demons are cool, so to speak, in this context? What is that all? <laughs> Man, just even writing the book, I just went a little bit deeper in my studies of, of angels and demons and like just in and, and I, I, I re I reiterate several times throughout the book just the fact that the word angel simply means messenger. They're messengers. 
And the more that I was writing about my encounters and then my experiences and my trials and tribulations and some of the beautiful ecstatic and seeing angels and seeing demons, the more that I kept repeating the fact that they're simply messengers. And then I look at this whole thing, the sovereignty, like the way that these angels and demons operate, the demons are, are angels as well. They're beings that bring forth messages. Like an angel isn't like a type of being. There's so many cherubim, seraphim, raphaim, malachim. Uh, you know, there's so many different rankings and, and orders. And just like what we would just call demons. But there are these entities who carry messages from heaven for us. And uh, and some of these demons have messages too. And, and the message may be, hey, if you continue on this path, if you continue on these drugs, if you continue, uh, you know, lying and cheating people, you're going to have to deal with us. That God is going to like, you know, he's almost holding us back because he because of his love, but he's going to let us go because of his love too to teach you a lesson to say, hey, stop cheating people. Stop lying to people. Stop bending the truth. And so this song and dance of what is good and what is bad or demons are bad. No, they, they serve a purpose. They were created entities that have a purpose to bring you closer to the light. To, so, to these, allow so, you to these, so, re so really, if you look at God in its natural state, it's formless. God is formless. So as we begin to expand, Derek, and I'd like your feedback on this, as we begin to expand beyond the layers of boundaries whatsoever, even in this room, if you look at it from a point of view of physics, we look at, you know, all these things as physical matter, you begin to break this down, there's empty space, you find little pieces, you begin to break them down, there's more empty space, and there's more empty space, and there's more empty space. Yeah. So really, angels and demons are not different at all. It's the same thing, because... If, if a demon is going to bring through a message that's going to impart to you something that's going to change your life with the greatest glory and the greatest bang for your buck, is it really a demon <laughs> or is it an angel? I mean, exactly. where, where does the line cross? I had a friend of yeah. mine. He was an amazing, Derek, this boy was an amazing psychic. I'm, I'm no joke. So I got a message from a friend of mine saying, Keith, there's some stuff in my house. I went to the house. There was a baby monitor, no baby crying. <laughs> it's just all this stuff. And... He was telling me that, he said, Keith, come over here and sit down. He said, sit with me. So I sat next to him on the sofa, and he says, I'm going to bring the, the entity, not demon, but dark entity. Um, it, it wasn't deserving of the title demon yet, but it was working his way through grad school to become a demon. Just a bad son of a bitch hanging out in the house causing a lot of trouble. And he says, I'm going to bring this energy over, and it, you, you, I can feel it. It sat on the couch and began a dialogue with it. I said, what are you doing, Richard? He says, well, let's find out what it wants. What's its purpose here? There's the only way you're going to clear this house. It says, he says, so he starts talking to this, this energy, and he says, we are agents of the light. He says, how do you figure that? He says, Keith, he just told me they're agents of the light. I said, how, do you, how does he figure that? He says, because it's our task to scare you back home. Yeah. Right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, they're scary. They they do a great job at that, and uh, and they'll you know have their way with you, and so they're and it's the ones that we we feel like have malicious intent or like are darker energies, but like they can't touch you unless you open up doors to them, right? So like the, the scripture says, and in, in, in the book I kind of go into detail is this formula that I I came up with is simply James four seven in the scriptures. Therefore, brethren, submit yourselves to God, resist the devil and he will flee. So if there's any types of wickedness in our lives or these these unclean spirits that we're dealing with or the spirit of fear and, and this, these negative entities, if we have opened up doors to them, we have to close the doors, right? But we have to make sure that we're submitted on every level of our lives to God, that we our hands are clean and our hearts are pure in this life. And as long as that's the case, if we haven't opened up any doors, then what it, come whatever may, that it's something that was sent from God for to, to buffet you, much like the Apostle Paul talks about the thorn in his flesh, the messenger of Satan that came to buffet him. We would call that a demon, a messenger of Satan we would call a demon. And Paul begged God on three occasions, take this from me. He said, no, no, my grace is sufficient. Because you've becoming, you're becoming too prideful, and pride cometh before a fall, I need to let this guy get through to you, because he's going to teach you some things that the angels can't teach you. He's going to teach you some, he's going to teach you how to remain humble, you know, and so just to be 
in that and see like again the ecosystem and the song and dance and almost like the mechanics of the the way that the spirit realm works the cogs in the system and things like that and uh, we get to see how that works and um and we're not a victim anymore and we have we have we have a say in the matter like we don't just you know we're not just being attacked by all these random entities and there's nothing that we can do um there's doors that that can be shut there's you know levels of forgiveness that we can we can work through in our in our life for for different things that we've done we can ask people for forgiveness and just to make sure that our hands and and, and heart is clean throughout the whole thing i really really love your take on all this dude most people who follow the Christian way, it's not out of judgment, it's a fact of the matter. You would even agree with it yourself. Most people who follow the Christian way will n not likely allow themselves to see the Christian path the way you do. Would that be a true statement? Yeah, but there's more people waking up to this type of understanding, this oneness that we are with God, you know? When Derek begins his day, <laughs> you wake up, you come to the room. When you get to a state of awareness, are you already planning what you're doing as far as podcasts, broadcasts? You get your coffee, whether you drink coffee or not, or juice, and yeah. you're just ready to get down into the into the trench and get at it. Is that is that how your life goes about? Yeah, man. Um, I like to uh, to find time when I'm not as busy when I when I can just make time. I have the time, but it's just making time to uh, to sit in gratitude for a little bit and just th this spirit of thanksgiving and whether it's a meditation or a prayer or putting on some beautiful worship music or some tones and frequencies to really tap in and have this encounter myself with the stuff that I teach. I do it myself, right? Um, I'll do that. And then I, I really believe in prophesying over your, over your life and over your day, just creating it. Um, and still out of a, a, an attitude of gratitude and a level of thanksgiving, like I'll just start walking through the house pacing and just like in this in this like it's a prayer, but it's a de it's a prayer to the father. But it's also a declaration. Father, I thank you that ma the masses are being awakened through my podcast. I thank you that lives are being changed from my conversation. I think that strongholds are going to fall off of people's ears and and off of their hearts and bondages are going to be loose when they hear the podcast. And I just begin to thank them and kind of create that spirit of expectancy in the atmosphere for myself and just even abracadabra I created as I speak it. So just understanding the power of the spoken word, prophesying over my day, uh, remembering people in my community who who need prayer, who are going through things. I, I, I begin to lift them up. God, I thank you for opening up doors in their life. I thank you that their greatest days are ahead. And just knowing the power of the spoken word and moving prophetically, speaking it over, over my day. And it's almost like the law of attraction. You begin to think about these things and you speak them and you create them and you expect them to come. And you kind of get your heart and your life ready to receive. You prepare your heart to receive the harvest that's going to come. And so there's an intention with everything that I do with the music and the podcast and um, the writing and the meditations that I do. They're all... There's so much that goes into them with like uh, the alchemy and the the preparation behind it that I want you to have an encounter with God. And so it, I get messages from people from all over the world who who are listening to, say, a podcast with myself and Jordan Maxwell talking about aliens and the Illuminati and stuff like that. And then he's gone. He's off the podcast. And, and so I've got all of these viewers because he's a big name. And so they're listening to the podcast and I just begin to talk about prayer. I begin prophesying over the audience. Father, I thank you that you're going to encounter the people who are watching it. I'll do it on camera. And then people just feel that same presence that I experienced in 1998, the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, if you will. And it starts encountering people where, no matter where they are. And they have their own encounter driving or, or listening to it. And they, they have to email me or call me like, when you prayed, something shifted in me, man. I thought I was listening to a podcast about aliens, and then you pray this prayer at the end, and my life has changed. And, like, they want to get involved, and it just, like, takes it to the next level, man. So that's, like, the song and dance of a day and the intention and what goes into it, you know? Wow, bro. I like your fire, dude. You remind okay. me of me, a Christian version of me. I'm more of a... 
just a spiritualist. I'm into I the school. Yeah, I I'm am into too. the school we, of divinity. A lot of, a lot of good terminology that, yeah, that I resonate yeah. with, and the Christian stuff too, and the forgiveness yeah. and Christ and the cross yeah. and you see, all that. I, I, you know, I'm a Christian. I'm all of it. I'm all of it. Look, if you told me, even if you're an atheist. There's no yeah. such thing as an atheist. I don't care who you are. You're not an atheist. You can't be. It's impossible. If you believe in the love of your children, the love of your wife, or the love of whoever, <laughs> you are not an atheist because are you believing and touching on something that is beyond something you can understand as to why you profess to love this person that you know you're so connected. You have a child that's born, that child comes out of the mama, and you touch that child for the first time, yeah. there is something there that's beyond this earth, and you know that. Yeah. So, <laughs> you're not an atheist. You're just trying to kid yourself or in denial from a bad yeah. experience you may have had in a bad church. But, yep. you know, for me, my, <laughs> my path right, man. <laughs> you're right. and my path is more of the Hindi way. I love the Hindi way. It's just my thing. But when beyond the Hindi way, it's not that at all. It's this thing that lives thing. It's this no thing that lives inside of me. And in that no thing is everything. And every day I do what I can from the time I come to the awareness of the room to I lay my head down. I'm in it just like you, Derek. I'm in it to win it, win or win a chicken dinner. I'm in it full. I want it for myself. I, hence my, t my radio show and my work is called Center of Light. I'm trying to empower everyone to become that very beacon themselves so yeah. we can become the lighthouse for the cosmic citizens adrift in the cosmic sea. We call them extraterrestrials or even just friendly people um, mm -hmm. that we know as humanity. And I, I, I love you, Wayne. I, love, I see you as a bridge, bro bringing those who are in a more fundamental Christian way. They attracted to you because of Christianity, but those who are in it to, in a more fundamental way. And you're dropping those seeds of others, extraterrestrials, and this, and these all what most people of the like would consider conspiracy theory. You and I know that rabbit hole is true, and it goes a little deeper. But you're opening the door for these newcomers into yeah. greater thought capacity. Yeah, that's awesome, bro. I love it. Yeah. It, it works both ways. So I, I really feel like there's two sides of the audience. There's definitely that side, those people who are in the church, but they're, they're not really getting the answers that they're seeking. They're asking the bigger questions. And, you know, they've been told, you know, maybe that's, that's Satan, you know, it's satanic. Let's don't ask those questions. Don't really look into that. Uh, you're just trying to find out too much. You'll find out when you get to heaven, you know, all these weird, you know, they're asking these questions, but they're not getting the answers. So there's definitely that group of, of people who are like devout Christians and in the church and they're just asking bigger questions. So they're there. And then there's the other side too, of the people who are like far out spiritual new age way left people who is like, now I'm kind of like introducing them to the beauty of Christ and that he's not against you and that his love is for you. And if you can come and experience the depths of, of the love of Christ that you've probably never encountered. And again, like you said, closer to the beginning is the fact that these people have had encounters with a bad church experience or whatever that really turned them off to um, going deeper in, in, in this relationship with Christ, who I believe that if anybody's seen him for who he really is, they would fall madly in love with them because he is love that was incarnated into a person, you know? And so that's just simply it, you know, kind of working on both sides. I agree. People are starting to see that they're starting to see the truth that was written, spoken of for a very, very long time that I am in my father, my father's in me and I am in you. You will do greater works than I, you know, and you can't just cherry, you can, and you know, certain things, but you can't cherry pick things that Christ himself says, self said, you know, I am in my father, my father's in me and I'm in you. All of that majesty lives right here. So in, in, in a way, no, let's not, it's not in a way. The question I pose to many people when we get into such dialogue is you begin the inner search and try to find where the you that you know as you ends and the God that you know as God begins. You can't do it. There's such a gray area. The way you will discover that is, like you said, removing the sin. Not sin, you're in trouble. Sin meaning I'm, I'm human. I, I, I fumble, I folly, I make mistakes. It's my task because I'm a spiritual grown-up. Now, I'm not a child of God. I'm an adult of God. It's time for me to take my <laughs> depends off and my pampers off and stand up and take responsibility. And in so doing... We begin to create the, the contact, close encounter of the best kind, the contact. And so I see that people are beginning to understand that when Jesus says, 
you would do greater works than I. How is that even possible in the fundamental <laughs> way? You can't. He says, you know, no, when no one is, you know, the equal level with, with Christ himself. Well, if Christ said it, then something has to be not right. You or Christ, you know, which one is it? But I think every, I think the whole world is waking up to Christianity. I think the whole world is, most of the world is waking up to the idea of other people and other ways that their religion through their religion and their culture they want the same thing christians want they want family they want grandchildren they want to see their tribe grow up to be community yeah community prosperous beautiful loving human beings so we can become that very prophecy of heaven and earth and then we got these people are really really hard and they stomp in the ground and they call them <laughs> muslims this ragheads and they call them black people and democrats and libtards and republicans it's like what is a, have you not forgot the love for your brother what do you think, Derek? What's happened? What do you see happening in all Man. of this chaotic, chaotic yeah. stuff? Are, are you are well, you they able know how to, to see get the, us. <laughs> Do you see the order in the chaos, my friend? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I, and they do too. Yeah, order out of K, they create order out of chaos, and so we create the chaos. We keep the people confused, and then we give them the answer. Whether the answer was was Obama, or the answer was Trump, or the answer was um buy this eat that you know this will make you feel better type deal so they keep us as consumers and stuff and they are really you're talking about witchcraft you're talking about sorcery on the highest level when it Amen. comes to all of that stuff just keeping people asleep and uh <laughs> people are waking up though you know people are waking up and um it, you know you have to you really do have to abandon abandon your stance when it comes to some of the the uh the things of this world that you're fighting for that are going to perish you know what i'm saying and like splitting hairs even as we call it and um and i'm finding a lot of people even christians who are waking up to um the beauty of um seeing god in everything and in everyone and so there's like the reconciliation of all things that he comes to to uh, reconcile all things unto himself Christ does and uh and they understand that and they're able to they are able to look at people and see a, a reflection of Jesus and they're able to see a reflection of themselves uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and uh, you know what I'm saying? Namaste and I bow to the, you know what I'm saying, you that is within me and all of these these ancient paths that are coming back. There's an ancient voice, it's the earth that's screaming to us and begging us to come back to the ancient ways and it is a way of love and uh, understanding and moving past all of this stuff that divides and because if they can divide us, they can conquer us and you know, s dissecting us off into religions and then uh, denominations within that r religion, and you know, and o only finding the try the people that s that look like you, speak like you, sound like you to commune commune with and stuff. And so, there's a beauty for a lot of different people waking up and just being able to see God at work in in everything and everyone. It's pretty awesome. My brother, do you have any music on YouTube to where you can grab and send me a link, something that's ready and audience uh, ready to hear? If you send me that, we'll go into commercial break. I'll play a Lavender Soul song, and then I'm going to come back and we'll drop this link. In. Everyone, my uh, guest tonight is Derek Grosskurt, and we're speaking about his phenomenal radio show. He has quality gear. I love it. I love some. I love a gearhead. I love someone who just loves what they do and they're willing to do what it takes to bring about quality. Quantity is always important. Quality is equally important. Um, tonight we are speaking with Derek Grosskirth and we're talking about his podcast, The Truth Seeker Podcast. And we also are speaking about his book, Spirit, Spirit Realm. Let me, let me read all the subtitle because oh it's God, really yeah. cool and I got rid of the <laughs> subtitle. Derek, what are the subtitles, sir? Oh my goodness. Uh, okay, so the subtitle of the book is uh, "Angels, Demons, Spirits, and the Sovereignty of God," uh, forward by Jordan Maxwell. It's it's just over a month old. It just came out, so you can get it on Amazon or uh, my website. will send you to it, truthseeker.com. But um, I try to cover it all, like any uh, mystical experiences that I've had with these types of entities. Um, I go into that and I kind of give a background explanation on the different ranks and orders of these entities and again if i've had any uh, supernatural contact with them i kind of go into some of those experiences and um and there's a whole plethora of them and uh and really i try to tie it back to the bible as well just to show you that a lot of this stuff is in the scriptures it's been there the whole time we may have glanced over it i'm learning so much as i as the, the more study I'm, I'm doing i'm finding that like i'm talking about the elementals and then they're showing you scriptures in the bible where 
Um, uh, people were communicating with angels that traveled through fire. They came from like the fire was a portal between heaven and earth and they came out of the fire, gave a message and jumped back in the fire and went back to heaven and and communing with these entities through the elements and things like that, the cloud, all of this stuff and really just blowing our minds of this stuff that's been in the scriptures this the whole time, but we've never, we just kind of glanced over it, you know? You know, instead of doing a Lavender Soul song, which happens to be my spiritual band, we are working on a new album. I did go to the recording stu- studio Sunday, and we cut the first track. Or at least I played the guitar for the first track. We're coming out with a new album, but instead of doing that, I want to go right to Derek's song. Derek, if you can send me that link to your I song. I sent you is- one on um on youtube is that cool i mean i'm at, sorry by all what? no at, yeah whatever whatever as long as you got it brother and it's usable and they're not gonna give me a yeah, spike on that. behind me uh let's see flight of the navigator is that it sir flight of the navigator all right it's gonna take me a minute to do this dance everyone welcome center of light radio always appreciate you you are always living in the light or you're doing it consciously a very simple question how do you know when you're living in the light mr keith blanchard things will be lighter you will feel light-hearted <laughs> you will feel delightful you feel like a lighthouse enlightened all these little fuzzy warm things that are these spiritual love nuggets right so let me uh i'm gonna change screens real quick give me a quick second i'm gonna drop this video called flight of the navigator love it already by my guest tonight mr derek grosskirth let me drop this down One, two, three, four. Liberty, 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 liberty. liberty. <laughs> Gotta love it. Welcome back to Center of Light Radio. Today, my guest is Derek Grosskirth, the Truth Seeker Podcast. Also talking about his new book, Spirit Realm. And we just heard the most amazing, redonkulous <laughs> song. Dude, that was phenomenal. The production, being a full-time professional musician, the production was phenomenal. I can hear, and I got earphones, and I can hear the the panning and the, the oh my yeah. God, the, the tones <laughs> are there. It's rich, it's full. Who did yeah. the mix down, bro? Um, I do all my mixing and stuff. Uh, I have different producers that I work with. So they a lot of times they do the music themselves, send it to me, and then I have like the vocal layering and all the mixing and stuff like that. So even with that. So like, are you a musician as well? I'm not saying that you're not a musician. A little bit. Are you a, a musician or just a I've rapper? Played, you put... No, no, no. So I've, play, uh, I've played bass in a couple uh, hardcore bands and done a lot of vocals, right? Screamo vocals and metal. I'm, I'm really big into some metal and stuff like that too. But I, I play... Play a little bit. Played in some bands, yeah. In the song, man, I heard some. Listen, I'm, th- I'm hearing this this tune, you know. <laughs> I'm hearing um, Merkabus and Wormholes and James Gilliland. <laughs> yeah. I was interviewed by James Gilliland many, many years ago on As You Wish. Yes. But, dude, I like your content, bro. I'm serious. I really, truly like it. Thank you. Thank Send me you. a link. We'll play another one later. For sure. For sure. Thanks yeah, so much, yeah. man. It means yeah, a so lot, yeah. Since we opened that door, let's talk about <laughs> Merkabas, Wormholes, and James Gillen. <laughs> yeah. Dude, well, he, you know, I mean, let, James Gillen opened up so much for me, man. Just, yeah. And, and I actually go into it, it. I mentioned him in the book and Isetti and stuff, right? Because, like, um, I got into a lot of this stuff as a Christian and, and being in the church. So reading about getting into ufology. There was a, there was a website. I don't know how if you remember this site, but it was BibleUFO.com. And it was by Patrick Cook. And it was like all of these verses that could possibly be talking about UFOs in the Bible. And so it just opened up so much for me. But when I was studying it, I was led down the Christian path. So looking up these Christian people who speak about ufology. And across the board, all the times you heard Christians talking about aliens or UFOs, they were always demons. So they paint the pictures of these demons who are flying around in spacecraft wanting to abduct you, wanting to do experiments on you and all of this kind of stuff. So I studied that for a good year under the Christian tradition, but I kept hearing them drop 
names of different people and Stephen Greer or and they would kind of mention different people. So I was like, well, let me check out some of their interviews and see what they got to say, you know, because I feel like these other people, maybe they were approaching it from an unbiased standpoint. It, it was almost like the Christians had an agenda and it was the evil alien agenda. I said, so let me just look into some of this. So I found BibleUFO.com going in deeper in that and listening to interviews with Patrick Cook. He's not with us anymore, but they were amazing interviews. Um, and and then Stephen Greer bringing up the CE5 initiative. There was well, finding videos of a guy named Prophet Yahweh who was so-called summoning UFOs on command using the Hebrew version of the Bible. Um, and then finding James Gillen who were going out under the, under the night sky setting intention and asking for sightings and ships would just come up and power up on command and say hello. And those videos along with my studies, as far as doing the the studies in the Bible of the angels and how they show up and they bring messages and ships are known to, to communicate telepathically with you when you're able to make contact and like all, and we're talking about the angels who bring messages, right? The angel just means messenger and man, it just, a lot of stuff started connecting a lot of dots and um it changed my life man and i started going out myself having my own encounters summoning ufos on command by myself freaked me out but changed my life at the same time and it was just uh, beautiful you know and then when i started talking about it openly and doing studies and that's what kind of separated from the regular average everyday church sunday Christian to, okay, okay, this is more mystical and the song and dance that we have with the angelic realms and the ethers and our space brothers, if you will, you know. Do you recall any other experience? Night night excursions being taken? They say, and it's as a rule, but I kind of want to lean into the idea that's probably true. If you see them with your eyes, they have other business with you that you may not be aware of that might happen nightly. Why nightly? Why does it have to happen when I sleep? It doesn't have to happen when you sleep, but it happens more often when we sleep because that's when we're most vulnerable. We're not lured into temptations of the outer world that the mind and the body create, mm -hmm. right? So we open and then it's not that they're not happening. They probably happen and God knows how many people. It's just that when you or excited about it, and you want to be conscious of it, or in some cases, they're going to take you, depending on who the they are. When we come conscious and we want in these things, Derek, for me, this has been happening to me since I was eight. I actually met one physically in, in a woman's body that was a male, uh, head of security in this quadrant of our galaxy named Nucleus 8. Long story. We can, uh, uh, long story. <laughs> I hung out with him for four and a half years. Yeah. There's, there's just no way. It, it's real. I mean, yeah. I the, the guy spoke very alien, and it wasn't a guy. It was a woman with a seven-foot superimposed gray human hybrid alien over him. 4,740 plus years old, he is now in one go-round of living. And the stories get so forth and so on. Do you recall any opportunities yeah, had, being board a craft? No, not on a craft per se. Now I've had, I've had, I've had them show up, but then there's this whole thing about like the ships versus the angels themselves. Like I think a lot of times these uh, lights that we're seeing in the night sky that come out, they morph, they change shape, they do all types of crazy aerial phenomena. Like I think that uh, in many cases that they're actual entities. Like those lights are living. You saw um, the ones in the uh, the the Temple of the Rock. You saw that one. The mm -hmm, one that just exactly. came down, that's a perfect example. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah, like that. And um, But but there are some that appear to be ships or whatever. I mean, I've seen a lot of the, uh, what you would call, cigar-shaped ship, ships during the day and the ones that look like eggs or whatever. So they communicate. They say hello. And it's something about, there's this, for me, there's a, uh, just the awe. I mean, that music that you heard came out of that, you know, and like, it takes me back. You know what I'm saying? To hear that, 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 that stuff came out in, I think that came out in 2013, 2014, but it still holds up. It has the magic to like facilitate encounter and to release creativity and awe and wonder and your ability to dream again. And you're in the beauty of stargazing and, you know, or just even gazing up at the day sky, right? Not even the night sky, just looking up during the day, seeing what you can encounter. And, and it reminds me of all of that stuff. And it was just so, so beautiful. So, I mean, I, I have had encounters with, with the beings never being on a ship. Like uh, a lot of it, again, you say through the dream state at night, you know, meditation, we're kind of hacking the dream state. 
when we meditate and we can yeah. kind of facilitate uh, communication through the through you know, deep levels of meditation where they show up and come and say hello and and things like that. So it's, it's really interesting. You know, I've had some encounters like that for sure. You know, uh, many people dream at night. And I asked my son, did, did you dream last night? Well, yeah, I don't remember. Well, whoever you are, if you don't remember or you want to remember it, just the simple want to engage with that nightly creates a new default. And next thing you know, you find yourself somewhat conscious. You remember your dreams. Then you start remembering your dreams. And now you're really excited because you're remembering your dreams. You've already upped your intention just because you're excited about having dreams tonight. And next yeah. thing you find yourself in this place and you feel so connected to everything. My son and I watched the movie Contact again today. Um, Jodie Foster? Yes, that that cosmic image that I'm connected to the entire cosmos via my divinity. And when you have that kind of lucid experience at night, when you wake up in the morning, you will know when you have been surrounded by others. They'll make themselves known. You go aboard their craft. And you know, like you said, there's a lot of these sightings that are conscious, sentient beings. In fact, a lot of these extraterrestrials, these craft are alive and they have a symbiotic relationship with these pilots. Yeah. You know, many people, they're, they're excited. We saw a UFO. How many people you get excited by saying, I wonder what beings are in that craft? You know, <laughs> nobody talks about the pilots. They talk about the hardware ship. <laughs> yeah, the nuts and bolts. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. I want to know who's flying that thing and where you're from and what you got yeah. for me and what, what can yeah. I give to you and... Let's hang out. I want to come hang out. Let's do the exchange sure. student program for a little while. Yeah, they're out there, man. And if you if you're looking if you're looking to make contact, it's very possible and just a simple will to want to do it. And then you have to spend the time, you know. And then you have to kind of become a Pez dispenser sometimes, with your head just kind of looking up the majority of the time. But I had so many beautiful encounters over the years that just really changed my life and. um um, and I, and I, the funny thing is I still like, I'm still just left in awe and wonder. And it's, I couldn't, like I put in the book, like the book is just still filled with a lot more questions than answers, you know, of just these different ideas and what ifs, you know what I'm saying? Versus like, yes, these were the beings from Zeta Reticuli. They come every third and first Sunday of the month and they'll say hello at 12 PM <laughs> as Orion is at its highest peak. You can see them like, I don't know. Like I have a lot of still more questions, but there's a safety there. There's we're here. We've been looking after you. We got your back. You know, there's just all of this, like we're watching over you. We've been here since the beginning. We're not harm. You know, we're not going to harm you. We're protecting you like this, all of these kind of things and ideas. If you, and it literally they're like, if you want to continue contact, just take care of your body, meditate more, lay off of the meat as much when you want to facilitate contact and, um, I go into detail about those messages and things in the book, but it's nothing like super crazy. At least I don't think, you know, it's all just beautiful, connect with nature, love, be in the moment, be present. It's everything that you get through meditation. It's everything you get from plant medicines and plant teachers. I mean, they're all being present, walk in love. You know, this moment is, is, is beautiful. Remember who you are and, and, and we'll do whatever you have to do to bring that awareness back to the now moment. And don't let these hours and minutes um, flee you, you know, be present in them. What Derek and I are talking about, no one really ever goes into explaining what spiritual liberation is. People think spiritual liberation is you have this ooey gooey fuzzy feeling, which I'm sure you probably will times infinity inside of you. And you explode beyond any parameters you ever thought were reality that you called stages of your life. Mm -hmm. But what spiritual liberation that has always been talked about, what is it? What is it? Do you sit in an apartment with Jesus and the lion is laying down with the lamb when you die? <laughs> what what next? I mean, would you just sit there for eternity and everybody's it's a nice, warm, breezy day? I mean, spiritual liberation is being in touch consciously with the universe that's teeming with life. You know, there are life there's life on dimensions you never thought possible. In fact, those dimensions all around you and your loved ones are dancing all around you right now that I'm bringing them to your awareness. There is life everywhere and spiritual liberation is getting out of the confines of the mind that allows us to be one with the omnipresent, present in all places at all times spirit. So it's a hologram and in every fragment of light, every photon, is the entire universe. So spiritual liberation, Derek, would you say, is having the conscious awareness 
to be fully back with Father, Mother, Christ, Buddha, higher consciousness, whatever we choose to call it, all that is connected to everything. It's being in that zone, in the sacred heart or the gate, yeah. whatever we choose to call it, right? Yeah, um, I think it's all of that. It's about being present. It's about um, removing judgments, uh, being in the moment, honoring people, seeing through the veils that we've created or society has created, the boxes that we've put people in. The boxes, again, like you said a while ago, you put Muslims in, then you put Hindus in, that you put Christians in and pastors in, like moving the boxes and be able to see the person for who they are, which is an extension of you. Everybody is an emanation of God and an emanation of you and treating other people like you would want to be treated because, in fact, you literally are like what you put out comes back to you. So honoring people is honoring yourself. Jesus says that when you give, you know, one of these people who are thirsty a cup of water, you've given me water. You know, when you visit the homeless and when you take time to go visit the people in in, in prison, he said, you visit me in, in prison. It's like and his disciples were baffled. They're like, what do you mean like, that we visited them in prison, visited you in prison? It's like what you've done unto the least of these you've done unto me because everyone is an extension of yourself. We are all connected. That's what the body of Christ is, is when we are consciously coming together that we literally formulate God on the earth. The, per, the person of Jesus, we become, we come together, all of our different facets and what our beliefs and what we look like and how we operate. But when we come together in the spirit of love and of unity, which is what Christ is, we formulate him on the earth. And, uh, and there's beauty in our differences and the, um, you know, the hand and the foot and the nose and the eyes and the ear are all different. And if we're trying to create copies of ourselves, it's going to be a body that is not really functional. It's going to be an arm with 17 hands on it. That's not really functional, but it's the foot, it's the hand, it's the eyes, everyone working together, knowing that they have a part and a place in the body of Christ and, and humanity that they're, they're here to serve. And that not just another face in the crowd, that they are special, that they are unique for a reason. So see what the church has done and, and religion has done is they've kind of taken our uniqueness and used it against us. The very thing that made us peculiar and separate, they kind of use it, say, okay, you're different. So you can't be with us because you're different, because you look different, because you believe differently or whatever the case is. So you can't be a part of us with, when we're fearfully and wonderfully made with everything within us for a reason. And when we, em we embrace our differences and come together or two or three touch there Christ is in the midst of us and so to move past our isms and schisms like I mentioned in the song um, that's when we see him you know they're in the midst moving past the differences and doctrines and beliefs and you don't do it the way we do it and we don't we do believe aliens or demons and your distance like man just moving into the love and past all of the the nonsense like whimsical stuff that doesn't really matter and just love is what uh, is gonna is gonna liberate us at the end of the day, and it's it's the love, you know. I want to throw this out there, my friend. A lot of people, most people, even people who are not of the Christian faith, think Christ was a man. That's not what Christ is. Christ, Jesus embodied the Christ principle. Christ is not a man. Christ is beyond the form that we have identified as Jesus. Jesus became the conduit for the Christ. In so doing, he became the Christ, Jesus the Christ. So when we call Jesus the Christ and the only, we actually sort of limit the divine fire that lived not only that is on the present, but in Jesus itself. What are your thoughts about that? That the Christ is not really a man. It's inclusive, but what the Christ is, it's the omnipresent spirit, which is every thing or no thing what are your thoughts about that sir um i believe in uh i believe that yeah christ was was the anointed you know that jesus was the anointed he he carried his anointing and and uh, he was the messiah that that came to save his people f from their sins to show them a better way just as you know moses was a, was a form of christ for the Hebrews, uh, you know, just as all of these these leaders and patriarchs that we have are forms of Christ or images or, or shadows, if you will, of, of the Christ. And so, uh, you know, it all ties back in of him coming to show us the way um, and, and he did it perfectly. 
And um, but but I think he's just but to say that he was like just a man, I don't think that he was just a man. I really I really believe that um, that he is the, the, the image of God, just like what we but it's kind of tricky because we all are. We are all images of God and we are made in his images and, and, and likeness. And we are the son of God. But his what, pure heart gave him a head start. <laughs> yeah, and what what he did, um, he did something that we couldn't do, though, as far as being perfect. Like he never messed up. You know, we we we've messed up. He never stole. He never, you know, acted you know, out. No, I, I want to, th- Derek. You you're the kind of guy you like me. You you like a good rabbit hole chase. You like good yeah, research. Sure. I just want to throw this out to you. This is not to buck anybody's current anyone. Um, and this is not to be contrary. This is just to throw up a new nugget. You mentioned about he walked the perfect walk. I love that image. I I love it. There are many stories. There are many books, and I'm not swayed by any of them. I'm just Mm -hmm. entertaining an idea. They say that he had tendencies, and he was a divine brat, that he would create these sparrows out of clay. Just, just if there would be such a divine, an image of a divine brat, someone, you know, royalty might see in some courtship somewhere in court. Um, You know, I'm open to the idea. I, in fact, I love the idea that he was human it gives many of us the opportunity yeah. to see that in his humanity that we can reach the divinity so again i mm. i see christ as a, a bridge in fact here's something that most people have never into, or thought about when we look at the prophecy of heaven on earth what is that it means heaven as above so below also as as it is on hev- in heaven as it is on earth but when we look at the image of Christ being crucified, he's like this. So we're looking at the cross, which is a plane vertically coming down, and we see a horizontal plane. And where do they intersect? Right there. The two planes of the cross intersect here. So Jesus, in his selflessness, in his humility, in his compassion, was pointing exactly the way of the cross which lies where the two planes intersect, becoming the divinity on the earth plane. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah, living in the heart, you know, living in the heart. And that's what he embodied, you know, with what he did. Um, it was, he was, um, you know, he was, I, th- I think he was much more than a, than a teacher. I do think that, you know, he was the Messiah who uh, has came to, uh, again, was totally righteous, but died like a, like a vile sinner. You know, and he, he died the death of a murderer. He died the death of a of a thief, you know, and he took. He, I believe he took the, the the sins of the world upon himself, that he carried our our, our weight and our and our, our luggage, and uh, he he defeated death. He defeated hell, you know. That uh, he he came to he came to set the captives free, and that if we put our faith and trust in what he did for us, not just like I I, find, I do I believe in the spirit of regeneration. That like if we if we uh if we confess our sins that he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And like that for me was like the, you know, the starting point of anything beautiful in my life was the fact that I found out that I was loved regardless of anything that I've ever done. And that he had the power to, uh, to, to pardon my sin and and not just to pardon it, but he took it upon himself. Like when he was on that cross, the weight of the world, like it crushed him and he became, uh, he became, you know, cursed of God. He, 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 because he, anything that was to die on a tree was to be cursed. And he, he took all of our sins and all of our judgments upon himself. And, uh, so that we can find, we can find healing. And he done that because he loved us. And so that's the message of, of true Christianity. That's the message of the cross and that he died, but he also resurrected just making an open spectacle and mockery to says to give us everlasting life that whosoever shall believe in, in, in him shall not par- perish, but ever to be able to tap into everlasting life, not when you die, but now today that you can taste and drink of this well string of uh, stream of life that you, he says, I have water that you can drink of that. You'll never thirst again. I have food that you can eat of this food and you'll never be hungry. And he's talking about spiritual food that we're, we're, we're just searching for things outside of ourselves. And it's like, look, the kingdom of heaven is within you. You need nothing outside of you that they're trying to sell you to go within and commune with the Father. So there was like a veil 
with religious rituals and sacrifices and only the the priest could talk to God for you but he when when he died on that cross he split the veil between God and man so that we can boldly come before the the throne of grace and and we can all by ourselves and our own free will which is the most beautiful form of worship that we boldly come before God and say look forgive me. I I need your love. I need your grace. I can't do it on my own. I've tried. I've messed it up. And that grace that it comes down from heaven, the Holy Spirit, the fire, the baptism of fire that comes down and he sends the Holy Spirit, which is the helper. And he helps us through this. Why? Because it's hard. He is his Holy Spirit. He sends him. He's the comforter. Why? Because it's hard and we're going to need to be comforted. And, And it leads us in righteousness and it teaches us it convicts us of sin when we're doing bad stuff. And we're like, hold on, I need to get my, I need to get it together. It's the Holy Spirit because He loves you. He's helping you get to that level. He's helping you be Jesus. He's helping you do greater things than Christ did. It's the, it's the Holy Spirit that is walking with us, and it's the most beautiful uh, song and dance. It's, it's the most euphoric experience. I've tried a lot. I've had a lot of encounters with entities and, and angels and demons and imps and aliens and all kinds of stuff. But I'm telling you what this, this encounter that I've had with Jesus takes the cake, man. And, uh, and it's, it's an everyday thing. He bids us to come daily, man, for this encounter to be clean and washed in that fire daily. And it's so beautiful. It's euphoric. It's, uh, cleansing man you it's said awesome. euphoric twice i love it <laughs> it is man it's, it's a big part of it dude <laughs> the ecstasy of christ my god um you know a lot of people never really see the crucifixion in this light and i would like to offer this up they see as jesus died on the cross and it just immediately wipes everybody's slate clean that's not how it worked at all there are there is science and there's physics and there's metaphysics yeah. involved and you laid it out derek in a phenomenal way yeah. that you say when he was up there he bore the weight of the of the world what he did because of his pure heart here's the darkness of the world humanity's nonsense <laughs> what he yeah. did he allowed that darkness to move through his pure heart as and in so doing he transmuted the dark into light that is how you were forgiven you were forgiven because he scrubbed the human Mm -hmm. palate with his own blood (laughs) with his own blood so he he scrubbed it clean so what happened was a chemical process he was an alchemist he transformed lead the nonsense and the weight what is lead it's weight the weight of the world through his pure heart and simply illuminating <laughs> it's it's you know and so yes derek would you find that second song for us and while i sure. talk to the well, just audience tell me what what, what, it, what kind of song i've got so many what i, I you, want to feel what are you in the mood for what, i what want you of... to play for us or send to me what you feel we need mr teacher man send us something that you feel that you want the world to hear something you feel that represents you whatever you would like us to hear and that's why when i said when people come on my show they say what do you want to talk about i'm saying what gets you going? They say, well, this one sounds that's what I want to talk about. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm going to send you a song called Afa. All right. And uh, A-F-F-A, and really the end of the song explains the name and um, touch on a lot. There's aliens, there's Christ, there's a lot of aliens, but there's a whole bunch of stuff in this one. But uh, it's called Afa, so I just sent you that one. I'm grabbing it, meh. Everyone, welcome to Center of Light Radio. My guest tonight is Mr. Derek Grosskirth, and we have been speaking about all kinds of beautiful, expansive things. We've touched base on his new book, or his book that's been out somewhat a while, um, titled Spirit Realm. Um, we also have been speaking about his podcast, The Truth Seeker Podcast, and we heard one of his ridiculously <laughs> rocking songs a minute ago. And he's just given me a link to another one. And what is this one titled, my friend? Alpha. A-F-F-A. All right. I'm going to set this thing up. My name is O, which is the Hebrew word for light. If you already knew this, you must have a special interest in the Hebrew Bible. But if you've never heard the word O before, let this be one of the first Hebrew words you learn with us at the Israel Institute of Biblical Studies. I am a teacher of Biblical Hebrew, and I teach my classes online. For me, 
Teaching online is a unique experience because I get Welcome back to Center of Light final segment. My guest tonight is Mr. Derek Grosskirth, and we have been speaking about lots of stuff, mainly Christ. Oh my gosh, don't tell me my software is frozen. It hasn't done this in a while. Derek, it froze at the end, and I think I found the culprit. After all this time of having some issues, I found the culprit. Derek, welcome back to Center of Light Radio, sir. Yes, sir. Did you enjoy the video? I, are you signed? No. Why not? <laughs> Don't know. Well, probably because of the subject matter. <laughs> Dude, I th I, th I think it's a beautiful mix. I think it's a beautiful mix. Christianity, open-minded Christianity, spiritualist, cosmic, and it's woven together very well. The production is great. The videos are great. They have some humor. I saw the little alien. It's great. <laughs> uh, I, I recognize the voice of the narrator on the end, but who was that? It was uh, Mr. Terrence McKenna, the uh, psychonaut himself. <laughs> yes. My brother, we're at the end of the Center of Light Radio. I've been posting, and I will post again. Everyone, here are the contact. here is the contact from Derek. And for those on in Derek's tribe, mine as well. Um, I had a software freeze, and I think I know why. Uh, I think my video card is going out. Though I beefed up my RAM, it's nothing to do with the video card. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. Um, Derek, would you close us out with a final thought? Anything? Announce what you have going, how people can find more about you and your podcast, buy your book, whatever it is, your gig, bro. Whatever yeah. you have you would like to sure, offer. Sure, man. Please do so, that. Uh, yeah, so my website is truthseeker.com, truth, S-E-E-K-A-H.com. You can pretty much type in Truth Seeker anywhere that media is, is found, YouTube, Facebook. I mean, follow me on all that, Instagram, Twitter, whatever it is, and I'm there. Um, the book is out. Um, I have guided meditations. I have my music. I have over 200 songs, most of them about, again, spirituality, consciousness, Christ, and things like that. Um, podcasts, I do at least two shows a week, talk to some really cool people. Need to get you scheduled on now. And uh, I'd love to, bro. Kind of, I'd love yeah. to. Come on and talk about your story too. So that's what I do, man. I do my podcast. We have a community. We have a lot of um, people supporting my work via Patreon. So it's kind of like a membership and um, putting some really cool things out there. We do a Thursday night school of the mystics. It's like a hangout. Um, and we teach people to kind of follow their intuition, the psychic abilities, if you will, or ESP you know, how to type, tap into that prophetic utterances and quickening in the spirit, as the Bible would call it, to do that for themselves. And so uh, really cool, eclectic group of people that we run with. And so, yeah, I'll check out all my stuff, truthseeker.com. And, uh, yep, that's pretty much it, man. Well, um, how about if we uh, close out with a prayer on my end? Let me see. I would have it no other way, bro. <laughs> all right. So whoever you are listening to this, just do this with me. Close your eyes. We're going to just ask for a prayer of just peace and prosperity and blessing. So close your eyes. Uh, take your right hand and just hold it uh, above your heart, really in the center of your chest, just to live in that heart center. And I'm going to uh, send some energy there, and we're going to ask Christ to illuminate your heart. Take a deep breath in. Peace of God, rest of God, just coming in. Father, I just ask you, Lord, just to send your Holy Spirit, the one that we've been talking about this whole time, send your Holy Spirit down to the inner chambers of their heart. No matter where they are, no matter what they're going through, I ask for your love and your peace, just, Father, to go through, cleanse out anything that they're dealing with. Any stress, any anxieties must flee right now. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding to be imparted to my friend right now, that they would be able to live in the sacred heart space, that they will be able to make decisions from the heart, that be able to discern and make judgments from the heart. Of, of greater understandings. Father, I ask you to just to invade them in their life with the sweet presence of your Holy Spirit that makes all things new. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen and amen. Thank you, man. Blessings, my friend. You are loved beyond measure. I appreciate Love you. Love you, brother. Thank you, man. We'll hey. trade out shows. I'm going to get you on my show and introduce you to my, my crew as well. So thank you. I would love to. And keep me posted. Anytime you got something that's you know got some fire under it, let me know, bro. We'll create a podcast and we'll get you here and just keep doing what we're doing and what we love to do. Feels good, Thank doesn't you, it? Sir. <laughs>
Thank you so much. Appreciate it, man. Blessings. Everyone, Keith Anthony Blanchard, Center of Light Radio. I think I just found out why my software is freezing up. My video card's going out. That being said, I'm going to do some what's called a dump file. I'm going to turn my camera to the side, mute the mic, and I have to run this test while it's in its boogered state. <laughs> but what I would like from you, for you, through you, is to never live in a boogered state. You do that simply by asking. Right now, I don't feel so well. Just an intention opens up a dimension. Just your intention of wanting something greater. You keep practicing this. Expand that spiritual awareness muscle. You got artillery. When you understand who walks beside you, you will never be afraid again. Peace, love, and always remember, live in the light. See you soon.